Hey guys, how's it going? My buddy Nathan's down here today. He's got a really cool guitar he wants to show us. So come on back here, it's on the bench. Let's go take a look at this thing. Okay, so I got Nathan here. All right guys, so um, this is a, this is a uh, 1969 Gretsch Country Gentleman. So you just purchased this. I did, yeah. Um, so I bought it and I'm actually gonna have it fully restored. Um, we'll take a look at the binding. It has a typical Gretsch binding rod on it. Um, so it's gonna get all new binding. It's gonna get a neck reset. Um, it's gonna, gonna polish up these. So um, we can do a before and after kind of thing. Yeah, we're gonna film a video after it's fully restored and um, you'll be able to see it'll be a pretty pretty uh, rad guitar when it's finished and uh, it's already a really it's all, already a really cool guitar. Um, you know it plays not the best. It's gonna need some work, um, but it's definitely a sweet guitar, man. And uh, it's well, really let's, cool. Well, uh, let's set it over here on the bench. All right, here we are. We're looking at a 1969 Gretsch Country Gentleman. Yep. So you can see on the pick guard there, it's the Chet Atkins model, uh, just like the 6119s, the 6120s, and the 6122s. Um, this was these Gretches, the Country Gentlemen's were the top of the line uh, for the Gretches back then in the 60s. And uh, you can see it comes with all the gold plated hardware, Bigsby pickups, um, even like the select the switches. So this is going to be your pickup selector. Okay. So it's going to be down is the bridge, middle is both. Up is the neck, right? Standard I gotcha. three, standard three way switch. Gotcha. This right here is called the mud switch and it's a tone switch because if you look down here you only have two volume knobs a volume for your neck mm -hmm. a volume for your bridge mm -hmm. we'll get to that in a minute mm -hmm. this up here as you can see the G insert fell out of the top mm -hmm. but uh, this is the uh, master volume hmm. so what this switch does is it's the it's your tone switch basically so in the middle it's bypassed it's not doing anything right it's like as if you have your tone rolled all the way up switch it down and it's a bass shift so it they call it the mud switch because it just makes it dark and muddy right, right. I've you know I don't, there's only a couple scenarios where you'll actually want to move this switch most you know brian setzer in his 6120 the tennessean right i'm um, sorry the nashville's he um he'll just take this completely out of the circuit hmm. and you'll see that either he'll just leave it in there a lot of the times it's just a hole right there hmm and uh, so if you switch it up, it's like another shift. Uh, I think it's like a treble shift, but it rolls off the treble pretty much. So whether it's up or down, it sounds kind of muddy. So right. But um, down here, got the factory Bigsby. Yep, factory Bigsby uh, with the V cutout. Down here, this is the uh, the mute system. So right. if you see right here, and this is going to be something that gets restored. Um, uh -huh. There should be foam on top of this. Right. And what you could do is you can actually raise it up. Uh huh. And I don't know if you could see that in the. Um, you could see it kind of moving up and down, right? Yeah. If there's foam on the top, it actually palm mutes the strings for That's you. That's right. So. Before one, guys knew how to palm mute. Right. Once again, I think it's kind of like a marketing gimmick for Gretsch, you know, because you could just use your palm. I'm sure guys knew how to do there that. There was like one then, famous you know. song. But, um. Anyways, so. This is later, uh, the, the earlier ones, the 62s and 63s, like the, uh, the George Harrison Country Gentlemen's, the mm -hmm. ones that George Harrison used. Right. Those would have the two mutes. Huh. So it would have a knob on each side. Oh, I, I've seen Where one you of could those. dial them one up. of those. Oh, where no, you could, it was a buddy of mine there. Where you that. can, I think uh, Kim has Kim that one. That. Yeah, where you could dial it up. This one is just a switch, right? But anyways, this right here is a, is a standby switch. So in the back position, it's the guitar's on. In the middle, your guitar's off. In the forward position, your guitar's on. So it's a three-way switch. On, off, on. Wow. So you'll plug into it, and you'll be like, man, why isn't my guitar working? All my volumes are up. Oh, yeah. It's that stupid How little weird. switch right there, yeah. right? But it's cool. I think the reason why they put this in here was because you only have your two volumes, right? So let's mm -hmm. say that you have... A, a bridge tone dialed in and a neck tone dialed in and you're playing a show mm -hmm. okay so um 
what you could do is you could roll off the master volume so that you don't have to uh, touch your bridge and neck volume or if you had it all set up perfect you could actually just switch the guitar off right so that you could put it on standby whenever you're playing um, let's say you're switching out your cable or something whatever you're doing um, you know it's just like a little standby switch but um, if you check out these pickups these are the uh, filter trons so this is after they got the patent so these are not PAF filter trons um, same thing but you know a little later and uh, this has the um, the thinner bar bridge on it you know some of the uh, the earlier ones they had a wider bridge on them looked exactly the same with the thumb wheels that would uh, bring the bridge up and down and it just sits on a piece of uh, I think that's ebony right there floating bridge though so if you take all your strings off the bridge will move around and uh, you have to get it lined up right for the guitar to intonate correctly and uh, Bigsby stays in tune really well this this is actually a really smooth Bigsby um, compared to some of the newer Gretches or even newer Bigsby's that I've played um, this one's just really smooth and um, up here we have this is an ebony uh, fretboard right here and it's got the neo classic thumbnail inlays all up and down the neck there and uh, on the headstock up here we have the Chet Atkins Country Gentleman um, badge and uh, the cool thing about the Country Gents is they actually have headstock binding as well and a zero fret so the strings rest right on that fret up there the nut kinda just guides them in the right position and uh, if we check out the binding along the neck the neck binding is actually all there it's actually in really good shape there's only one little crack right down here on the neck binding and uh... this little piece will get glued back down what what did these luthiers usually what in ballpark you know what what's it cost to um, put new binding on one of these bad boys? Um, it ranges, but uh, I actually got quoted yeah. around a thousand dollars for okay. a neck reset and a full rebind, which is pretty good. Uh, I sh I shopped around a little bit. Um, I got quotes as high as a thousand dollars, twelve hundred bucks just for a rebind. Yeah, and then another five six hundred well, for a neck reset. What can you do reset. if um if you don't want to put that money into it? I mean, I because if can you just like maybe drop super glue on there just to kind of keep what's there or is that going to be a bad idea with that um you can but it's just going to continue to get worse man you know right. I, I play this thing at home just messing around in my bedroom you know playing it uh -huh. and um whenever i'm done i'll have binding on my pants yeah right darn. it it falls off um but you they can all, you can they've all done you can this huh? stabilize it as they say uh -huh. But uh, you know, eventually it's just gonna really need Kinda that, need that is full right rebind. Right. Yeah, that's starting to oxidize right there. Same with on some of the parts. So if you flip it over, talk about this for a minute because this is kind of cool. Okay. So yeah, the the back pad, right? The comfort pad. Yeah. Um, it's funny. It actually is pretty comfortable. But the reason they did this was because if you pull it up, see, I'm not it worried snaps about not on. taking it off of there snaps on and there's your cavity coming. and there's a cavity to get to all the electronics uh -huh. back there wow. so this is a good condition and you know other it, than the binding yeah the finish uh-huh the finish is all in really good shape uh-huh the hardware could be cleaned up a little bit it was definitely played because the neck is worn through the finish right here and all the main spots you know like seemed like whoever had it before was playing up here in the cowboy court area a lot but overall, the finish is in really good shape. Um, but once let's the talk gets, about this uh, zero fret. Yeah, the zero frets are cool. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that um, the strings actually rest on this zero fret rather than the nut. The nut, the nut slots just kind of guide it along, you know. And um, yeah, so the nut just actually holds the string in place, but yeah. the height. It, it's setting on that first fret right there. Yep. And this has a 1 and 5 eighths nut width. If I remember correctly, I think I measured it the other day. So that's sort of on the narrow side. Yeah, it's, it's kind of medium. Okay. You know, it's, um, 
It's not as big as the big Gibson necks, but it's not as small as the small Gibson necks. It's right there in the middle. So if you check it out, you got the uh, the plugged F holes on there. Right. So you know before they switched to the headstock stamp, you'd have a little piece of paper on the inside of the body, right underneath the F hole that you'd be able to check out. You know we've done right. we've done other videos where you could see that. Mm -hmm. And um, overall, man. It needs some binding work. It's going to be a lot of fun, though. But it's a killer guitar. It sounds great. Plays pretty well for, you know, having the issues that it does. And uh, it'll eventually be set up, and it'll be one well, kick-ass guitar. So, Bro, thank you so much for bringing this thing in. Let's hear you play it a little bit, and then um, it's going to be really cool to see it when it's all done. Right on. Okay, so the... Store's kind of busy today, so we're just back here in the repair part of the store. And but uh, let's hear what this thing sounds like. So uh, right now we're we got the mud switch. We're just gonna leave that in the middle. Uh, we got the bridge pickup right now. <laughs> Good. Um, how are the frets over? Are you gonna refret it? No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna refret it. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I'm gonna have the binding on the neck done. Okay. It'll get a neck reset. Um, you know, it's a good player right now. Okay. I could even lower the bridge a little bit lower if I okay. want the action a little bit lower down. Right. Um, but I think it could still benefit from a neck reset. Um, if they're gonna redo all the binding, you know. I might as well as get this thing playing for the next hundred years, well, you know, as long as Thanks for too. bringing it in, man. I'm super excited to see what happens after all the work gets done to it. Yeah, me too, man. I, I can't wait. It's going to take a couple months at least, but it'll be cool. Okay, so guys. Let's hear all this neck sounds really quick. There you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. No neck pickup? Yeah, do it. Let's hear it. Mm-hmm.